passionate about music. Kader. My guest tonight, the gorgeous Tara McDonald. That's the new <laughs> single, Give Me More, sounding That's brilliant right. on the door. <laughs> and it was exclusive for a while with us. It still is exclusive. Still is exclusive. UK. Yeah, I haven't given love it, it to anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should. <laughs> got our grubby mittens on it. I love it. Uh, really good video as well, because that's, that's kind you. of like the Alice in Wonderland theme, yes. isn't it, on the videos? Like yeah, you said, very, very cheeky, but it, mischievous. Yeah, well, I'm kind of like the dark and eerie Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland goes more. <laughs> it's how video should be as well, because it's got the colour, it's got, you yeah. know, the tongue-in-cheek feel, the storyline. It's. I wanted to go a little bit more sexual, but quite then dark we, would, as well. we wouldn't get it on the TV. <laughs> oh, maybe next time. Next we'll time, do that next yeah, time. yeah. Uh, can we talk about the producers that you work with? Because you have worked with an amazing selection of uh, re remixes and producers. I mean, yeah. obviously David Guetta, yeah. one of those. How do you look at him now? Because he's he's obviously gone more mainstream, <laughs> hugely successful. Yeah, it's uh, incredible what he's done. Are you still in touch with him now? Are you yeah, going to be yeah. working with him again? Um, I hope so. Like, his manager, um, one of his, his French team is like a... Um, um, how would I say? He, he advises us basically with what we're doing because my project started from France um, and yeah we're still in touch of course I would love to do something with him. We made a record last year together with Afrojack called Pandemonium. Yes yeah we played that yeah. yeah. Oh cool. I've got and, it I'm uh, gonna line it up. Yeah it's um, so it was really nice that he thought of me to do something else you know because that was literally December last year and I'd love of course to do something else with him. I'm just utterly in awe of what he's done you know so, I think when love takes over that really opened up the rest of the world sure. to David Guetta but in in continental Europe he's always been massive I think he's got a real knack for choosing the right female vocalists as well and female vocalists yeah. and, and it's very male him, vocalists, isn't it? um, Chris Willis yeah I mean, he's got an, an amazing voice and a great songwriter and he's but you look friend. at the leading ladies I mean there's you there's Sia yeah. Oh, Kelly Rowland. I like to be in this list. <laughs> it's definitely in the list. Definitely in the list. Yeah. Would you would you work with him? Of again? course. Yeah. yeah, I would have to be an idiot not to. I so mean, you won't be thinking, oh, kind of, I've worked with that producer before. No, not why, at all. Why do it again? I, I'm never like that. Like, um, I, I really love uh, working with, with new people and people that I've worked with already. Like, and, and in the future, I might even do something in a different genre as well, just because I genuinely am a music lover. And um, like the weekend that's just gone, I did uh, a gig in Amsterdam. It's called the Harlem Jazz Festival. And I worked with an orchestra and we did all of the tracks completely orchestra live horn sections and so I'm I, I love all types of things just give me an audience give me a way to make music and I'm happy as Larry really. So you kind of stripped back the arrangement and did it completely yeah. differently? Oh it was crazy. That's a it challenge was, and a half. Um, they were really good musicians so I was in quite uh, good hands and we had a great conductor but we did give me more um, and that ended up being quite sort of slutty <laughs> quite Etta James <laughs> um, just want to make love to you kind of vibe. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, it was crazy. Now, we mentioned uh, Manchester Pride, where you're going to be performing yeah. on Saturday. Um, I'm trying to think of the last Pride that you did in London. Was it Soho Pride a few yeah, years ago? Um, yeah, it was Soho. Yeah, Because you did feel you. the vibe, didn't you? Yeah, I did. On the Gaydar stage. Yes. Do you have memories of individual prizes is it, is it all a bit of a blur because you tour um, so much and you you know I go around the so world much, but i haven't done that many prides so i remember them all really um i did portugal pride once in porto and it was the first ever year that they'd actually had a march and this was maybe 2006 2007 wow yeah it's crazy because it's quite still a catholic country it's not very open and even the gay stars in portugal won't come out and say they're gay and so it's looked on really like a charity and they, they kind of said would you come over there's no money but blah 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 I was like of course I'll be there and that's something to remember more isn't it when you you yeah. kind of involved in that whole kind of political thing as well it, as just, just doing really the show it's just strange like when I think of you know it, it's 2012 but if you uh, I've got friends in Jordan that are gay um, you can't be gay in Jordan yeah, yeah. and maybe even live they tried to open a gay club and it's you just can't do it and and it's terrible that we're in this age and people still haven't got equality but 
that's how it is yeah. and that's why I'm just so proud to do as many prides as I can really it's great that you're doing them um, we've got to talk about your history because I don't think we've talked about this when you've been in before oh. at the age of nine I think you were yeah oh, Les Miserables I yeah I did you could probably Miserables. pronounce it better yeah. than me no, I Les know. Miserables <laughs> the yeah Les Miserables the Gums. <laughs> yeah I did that when I was nine for about two years that was in the West yeah. End wasn't it yeah it was my first ever job like most things in my life have just been kind of through luck and being at the right place at the right time and I'm sure um, that's not true I know honestly the, the skill as well think, the well, talent but I think how you fell so into it many talented people honestly talent is almost cheap you know I see so many yeah. amazing gospel singers you know and, who are uh, overlooked who yeah. don't ever get on yeah yeah that's it you just you go make your own luck a little bit you, of course you have to have talent have to work hard but um yeah I went to this little primary school I got I was getting bullied at school and I, I developed a stutter and I was so painfully shy that my and I'd always been quite precocious before that you know I was always look at me at home making making a stage from I don't know some twigs in the garden <laughs> <laughs> making my mum and dad watch me for hours and uh, I, I just changed into a very shy kid and so I went to this um, church school church group after school like a performing arts thing and someone else's dad said oh there's an audition for Les Miserables you should take your daughter so my mum and dad very luckily did we queued up for half a day we had sandwiches and a flask of tea and whatnot and uh, ended up getting the part did that for a couple of years and that that really got the ball rolling because I always knew I wanted to sing and especially if you're a child there's not that many things that you can do and I was just lucky that that then proved to my parents that I was really serious about it and then at such they, a young age because yeah, nine is well they spent the rest of the next sort of 10 years carting me round to rehearsals <laughs> and auditions and uh, yeah all sorts of things and you won a, a competition a singing competition just a few years later yeah when I was uh, that was the Danny, Danny Kay award yeah presented by Audrey Hepburn yeah. <laughs> Seriously, the yeah. Audrey Hepburn. Yeah. Every gay man's dream to be presented with <laughs> She's an award. She's my dream. <laughs> by her. <laughs> yeah, it was um, the Danny Kay Award. It was called that for UNICEF because Danny Kay was, he, he dedicated a lot of his life to work for UNICEF. And Audrey Hepburn was also an ambassador for UNICEF. Um, and so they, uh, it was one child from every European country that had a song written for you. And we, we picked our own song. It was through my chaperone's boyfriend at Les Mis who was a songwriter he had this song called Make Your Own Rainbow and I really liked it so we picked this song for me went to a studio recorded it um, submitted it for this competition and um, yeah represented England in the competition and won it crazily it. enough and I became a, an ambassador for UNICEF brilliant so then I performed at Wembley Arena with Fulary Glazier so wow yeah it was That's crazy brilliant. and talking about Game Man's Dream as well because you performed with uh, Jude Law Yes, in Joseph. When, I was, when I was 12, I was getting <laughs> it's, like, it's just never ending. How was he? Yeah. Did you, did you, because oh, you, you were just 12 at that time? Yeah, he was probably about 18, 19. It was yeah. a National Youth Music Theatre. We did a month at, uh, for the Fringe Festival in Edinburgh. And because of my West End past, everyone was in love with him. Let me just tell you, he was he was born gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, even my mum had a little thing for Jude. Everyone <laughs> did. And uh, because I'd been in the West End, I was allowed to sit next to him at lunch and everyone hated me for that. <laughs> Jealousy. <laughs> Jealousy, <laughs> bitches. <laughs> we mentioned David Getter earlier with the Afrojack collaboration which you did, which yeah. was Pandemonium, which we played a couple of years yeah, back. Yeah, that's right. Tell us about this. Oh, it was crazy because I was on a plane from South America and I just literally got a call from David uh, this missed call saying do you want to come make a, a track um, this week we need it really fast because we're just finishing off a compilation I didn't write this one um, and it's called Pandemonium and it was with Afro Jack who's someone else that I had wanted to work with for a long time we've actually made some records together but they've never come out yet um, so of course it was an amazing opportunity it was on the Fuck Me Unfamous 2012 Ibiza compilation and I was very happy to say yes <laughs> uh, Tara lovely to see you thank you so much and uh, we'll see you on Saturday on the main stage yes. Skate our main arena Woohoo! thanks for coming in passionate about music